All right, number 19 and 2.8, I think is a really good question here. They've given us a piecewise function, g of x, in two parts right here, and they've asked us to determine whether or not the IVT applies. Uh, I'll leave out the rest of that. Let's stop right there, though. Whether or not the intermediate value theorem applies. What I like about this problem is it forces you guys to pay attention to the hypothesis of a theorem, which is something we don't spend enough time thinking about. We spend all of our time on the conclusion of a theorem, but the hypothesis is really important as well. It tells you when you can use this theorem to reach a conclusion and when simply you can't. And the hypothesis of the intermediate value theorem, guys, says that a function has to be fully continuous on an interval from A to B in order for us to be able to make those conclusions uh, that the IVT normally leads us to. So let's take a look at what's going on here in this function. G of x is a piecewise function, and I want to go ahead, this is not that complicated of a function, I want to go ahead and try to graph this one here manually and see what happens here. So they're only talking here about an interval from negative 1 to positive one. So I don't think I need to draw much of this graph, but I also don't think it's super hard to draw either what's going on. G of x is equal to the opposite of x when x is less than zero. So when I'm graphing piecewise defined functions, even though zero is not in the domain of this part of the function, I still go ahead and put it in for x. So when x is zero, y is the opposite of that, which is just zero. So this first part of the graph ends as it were, at the point 0, 0. But because 0, I shouldn't have put a line right there, because 0 is not included there, that's going to be an open dot at 0, 0. And then it's just the function y equals negative x everywhere to the left of that. So we kind of draw a little ray going out to the side right there. And that's what this thing looks like on the left-hand side. That's y equals negative x for all x values less than zero. Now we pick up the next part of the function here, and when x is greater than or equal to zero, we follow this rule. So I'll go ahead and put a zero in here. Zero cubed is zero, plus one is one. The second part of this graph starts at the point zero, one. And because it's greater than or equal to, this one's gonna be a closed dot right there. And then from there, guys, x cubed plus 1 is just a cubic function shifted up one unit, so it's going to look something like that. Okay, so that is the graph right here of y equals g of x. Got it. And so the question here was, let's take a look now, guys. Does the IVT apply to show that this function right here takes on all values between f of a and f of b on this interval here uh, from a to b? And our answer to that one right here would be a no. We would have to say that this function, uh, that the intermediate value theorem does not apply to this function because this function is not continuous on the interval from negative 1 to 1 on account of the jump discontinuity that it has at 0. So we would have to write this out here. We'd have to say, no, the IVT does not apply does not apply, let's be specific here, to g of x uh, because, here we go, uh, g of x is not continuous on that entire interval here from negative 1 to 1. Okay, so I think I've answered their first question right here. Uh, we've got that. Now, there's a second part, though. If it does not apply, and that's us, so here we go, determine any values between f of a and f of b that the function does not take on for x as an element then from a to b. And that's where this gets a little bit more interesting. Your a and your b value here, guys, are the starting and ending values in this function. So g of a, we would go ahead and put in a negative 1 to this function which would apply right here. We're taking the opposite then of negative 1, so I guess I should have written that out. That's g of negative 1, and the opposite of negative 1 is 1. We're basically getting this point right here as our starting point. And then for g of b, our b value is the right end point of the interval. That's g of positive 1, and we would plug a positive 1 into the second part of this function. 1 cubed plus 1 is 2. So that gets us the ordered pair 1, 2. Now, this is where, yeah, this is a little bit interesting here. Um, you got to be careful about how you read a theorem and whether it applies or whether it doesn't. Now, we've made a point here of saying that this function does not satisfy the hypothesis of the intermediate value theorem because it's not continuous at x equals zero. However, and this can happen, it does still satisfy the conclusion of that theorem 
every y value here, oh, I missed, every y value here between one and two occurs in this function right here at a spot, like right there, for example, in between negative one and positive one. So this would be a case where even though the hypothesis uh, is not satisfied, the conclusion still is. Um, and it has to do with the fact that these two p uh, blue pieces that we've drawn right here, you know, yeah, they're kind of disjointed horizontally, but vertically they still cover everything in between positive one and positive two, everything is covered in this little range right over here. So there aren't any values right there that the function does not take on between f of a and f of b, that being one and two, but I got a feeling on either 18 or 20 that probably did happen. Okay, so that's a wrap on number 19.